Hello everyone. I am Brenda Quintana and right now I am just going to wait just a minute uh, to see if I have some live viewers here tonight. Tonight I'm going to be showing you another project with the Puzzle Pieces Thinlets and I've been featuring this product all this week on my blog and it's a wonderful product because you can make little cute little puzzles with it and tonight I'm going to do a mini puzzle and I'm going it's going to be a mini photo puzzle and I'm also going to be doing a little gift box to go with it so it's going to be kind of a cool thing um, a little gift I can see this um, as a cute little gift um, maybe for like students in a classroom like if you're a teacher um, you might want to um, make all these little mini photos and, and boxes like for little um, parent gifts um, at Christmas time I can see that application I can see um, it being really cool for grandparents um, uh, I know my um, uh, mother-in-law I know as soon as she sees this on my blog she's gonna be like oh I just love this um, so um, I think it's gonna be a, a really cool thing so I'm just gonna wait a minute and um, we'll get started just really shortly um, so I'll have to tell you what's going on in my life today in the meantime so um, I am here uh, by myself tonight because my husband and son have just left for the airport they are going to Barcelona uh, my husband teaches a course in Barcelona uh, every summer uh, just for a week and this year my son is interning with my um, uh, husband and so he's going along and he's going to help my husband with the course so it's kind of cool um, it's been a very frenzied day and that's why I'm a little late getting started tonight unfortunately because it was just kind of a crazy crazy day um, but they are finally out the door and they're at the airport they will take off in, in a, maybe a couple hours so um, I'm happy that they're off I'm gonna have a week um, to myself and lots of time to create and hopefully have a whole bunch of new projects to share with you over the coming weeks but today um, is the puzzle pieces thin let's die and uh, it's part of a bundle called uh, love you to pieces and um, if while I'm doing this video if you guys have any questions at all please go ahead and just type them in if you see something that I you know um, that causes a question just just let me know and I'll go back I'll scroll back afterwards and I will answer them so um, I I'm gonna have to turn the camera around to show you my work surface um, so um, a, a few things that I found out while working with um, the puzzle pieces thinlets and photos um, there's a good way to do them and a bad way to do it actually I, I like ran that photo through so many different ways it was crazy um, but I think I finally found a way that makes me really happy um, it makes it easy for the puzzle pieces to come together I mean they're not going to be as thick as a regular puzzle but they're going to be thick enough to handle and so it kind of makes me happy so I'll show you some of my mis mistakes not all of them some of them just ended up in the garbage because I was just done with them but some of the things that I did I'm just going to show you right away and just kind of give you an idea so let there's a few people here now so let me turn this around and I'm going to get started on so there is my view right now it's kind of it's getting getting dark out here in Boston area so um, let me slide this aside this was this is my good product here so the first time I um, cut this puzzle and you'll notice this puzzle is a little bigger too because I've been experimenting with making bigger puzzles and if you want to know how to make a 24 piece puzzle um, you um, can do that. I talked about how to do that yesterday on my Facebook Live. So that's um, a blog post. Uh, it's called Making Bigger Puzzles. So you can have a look at that. Anyway, so this is my one of my first um, attempts. Um, this is, um, I photocopied um, Nicholas's photo. This is, this is my son when he was younger. He was in, I don't know, I think maybe first grade in this photo 
um, I think this was his first grade photo. He's now 17 years old and he no longer looks like this, but he's still sweet and cute. So the thing I didn't like about this, this is thick whisper white cardstock. And it, it was, um, the photo was photocopied onto it. And the problem with this is it's just a little bit too thin. So it's very hard to create the puzzle and keep it together. And you can see right now, like as I'm creating it, um, the puzzle pieces, when I was doing it, they just kept kind of coming apart. So it, it's not really a good way to have this, this puzzle. So just photocopying it onto thick whisper white, um, it's too thin. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. It's going into the garbage now. Okay, then what I did is I did this one here. This one, um, I did this one with photo paper. And what I didn't like about the photo paper I had was it had like a, an extremely sticky finish when it went through the printer. And I kind of need to heat set it. So if you're using photo paper to recreate your photos, um, I backed this one with cardstock. And this was just a little bit too thick. I had to run it through the Big Shot so many times. And so I just really didn't feel like this was a good fit. And even so, I just don't think the puzzle pieces stay together quite as nicely as my last um, rendition. So... Um, if you're using photo paper, um, I would say um, you make sure that it's it doesn't feel sticky to the touch because if it does, it's going to probably be ruined when it goes to the big shot. This was photo paper that um, I ran through the printer. And I just did this. Um, this is just the photo paper. And it's just too thin. So... If you're going to be using a photo or if you're going to be using photo paper, like if um, you're going to copy it onto some photo paper because you don't want to ruin, maybe you don't want to ruin your original photo, right? So um, that's why I did the photocopying onto different paper because I wanted to keep my original photo. Um, and this is just too thin. So... I don't recommend just cutting a regular photo and turning it in, into a puzzle because this is going to be about the same thickness as a regular photo. And um, it's just a little, little too thin um, because it's not going to stay together very nicely. So that one, no, no, just to the regular photo. Um, if you are using photo paper, um, you um, need to heat set it if you're gonna run something through the Big Shot. All right, so this one here, I finally decided I was gonna print it on something other than photo paper. So I printed this one off on Thick Whisper White and I backed it with regular cardstock. The problem with this one is it's a little thick. It took many passes through the Big Shot and even so, sometimes it didn't cut 100%. I really didn't feel like, like it stays together a little bit better, but I feel like my last rendition is the best. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So what I did here, because I didn't want to ruin my original photo, I printed this, I just copied it onto whisper white cardstock regular whisper white the thinner one and then i backed it with the regular whisper white so basically it's two pieces of whisper white and it's fused together with multi-purpose adhesive sheet and that's another thing the multi-purpose adhesive sheet is key with making these puzzles um someone wrote me a comment on um one of um i guess it was my wednesday um post when I was talking about doing the puzzles and she said she had used um, Tombow, Tombow, um, this glue in the past um, <clears throat> to adhere her puzzle uh, together and she said it got all warped so I don't recommend um, using um, regular glue. I think the multi-purpose adhesive sheet is the key here. So the cool thing is you can take this puzzle apart. It's still thin 
but it stays together fairly well. It, it kind of locks a little bit into place because it's got the two thicknesses. The other cool thing is if I can flip this without totally taking it apart, look, I stamped on the back of it. And so love you to pieces. Isn't that cool? Like you have a picture of, of someone and it says love you to pieces. I just love that. Or if you're going to, like, if these are going to be given by a child to an adult, like maybe a grandparent, or if you're doing this in the classroom, you could cut the whisper white piece before you're running it through the big shot. Have every kid draw a little picture or have them sign their name, or um, you can stamp on the back for them if you want to do that too, but like I did here. But I think that's a really neat way to, you know, also do the back of the puzzle. So let me flip this back around. I lost a couple pieces. It is a puzzle, so you know, you, you will want to be able to piece it back together again. And it's funny with this one, I actually got some of the piece, puzzle pieces mixed up. And uh, because all the pieces, um, they're the same, like this one from over here is the same as this one from over here. So you can theoretically put this puzzle together in, in a wrong way that um, doesn't look very good. So anyway, that's how to do the puzzle. Let me show you how I actually go about getting the puzzle ready. So. I've got here, let me start off, I've got a photo of my son Nicholas and I want to crop this down um, so that we can run it through the Big Shot. I want to have a little bit of wiggle room so um, I want to cut this so that it's going to be centered. So how can I do this in a good fashion? Let me grab a pencil. So um, I've cut a sheet of vellum it's to four inches by four inches. So I'm just going to put this over top of my son's head and center it on there. Um, make sure I have the same amount of space, you know, all around the head, you know, so it's centered. And then what I'm going to do is take a pencil and I'm just going to mark all four corners of this piece. Okay, so now when I run it, go through the cutter, I'll know where I need to cut this. So let me bring in my Stampin' Trimmer. I wanted to show you this the whole process so you could kind of see. So um, I'm just gonna kind of guess ex kind of where the four inch mark is right here. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and cut that. And then I'm going to cut down this little tick mark right here that I made for myself. So cut down here. Now it's going to be pretty easy because now I need to, I'm going to make this a four inch square. So now I'm just going to line this up with a four inch mark. And it will also run along this little tick mark as well. It will be right around there. And then this will line up here at the four inch mark as well and then I cut it. So that makes it pretty easy to get your photo into the right shape for cutting. Let me put my trimmer somewhere. All right, so then what you're gonna need, you're gonna need your backing piece, which is also a piece of four inch by four inch um, cardstock, and you're going to need a piece of multi-purpose adhesive sheet. I recommend this cutting this a little bit smaller, so this is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, okay? So now, before I run it through, I just wanna stamp something on the back. So um, I'm gonna make myself a little pencil mark. Let me grab a ruler. So I, I wanna have this in the center because that's kind of where the puzzle is going to be. So I wanna make sure the center of this is going to be two inches over and two inches from the top. So I'm just making myself a little pencil mark to find the center of my cardstock. I'm going to take my Poppy Parade ink pad because it's new and I want to use a new color. And I'm just going to open it up. And I'm going to take this first stamp that says Love You. And I'm going to 
um, position it so that the corner of the puzzle is um, right along that dot. Okay. And then I'm going to take the two pieces. And this is rubber, so it's going to be a little harder to line up. But my little trick is I want to overlap that little corner with this little corner when I'm ho hovering over it. So it's just kind of the little bit of a corner into that piece. And there you go. So now I have something stamped on the back. So that's kind of cool. But like I said before, you could have them draw a picture on the back or sign their name or write a little message on the back. So that's, you know, just a little extra something that you can do. Um, that pencil mark is kind of embedded in the ink right there, so I'm just going to leave it. It just looks like part of the ink. So then I'm going to take my adhesive sheet. I think this is probably the hardest part, sometimes getting the backing off of this. Take off the backing. And I'm going to center it on my Whisper White piece. And remember, I cut it a little bit smaller, so it's easy to make it so it's not overhanging or anything. And since we're gonna be cutting in and making this puzzle smaller, um, it's going to, the, all the pieces will still have full coverage because that's what you want. You don't want any of that um, paper lifting off. So now let me grab backing off here. Okay. And so now you just want to make sure, I can kind of see it through my cardstock, that uh, the Love You to Pieces is, is facing the right way because you don't want to stick the photo on so that it's upside down. But it is, I can tell by looking through. And now I'm just going to hover this over the top. And when it looks like it's over top of it, I'm going to smooth it down. So then we're going to take our Big Shot. And I'm using my magnetic platform here. Um, so just magnetic platform, um, cutting plate, you've got your photo. I like to run this puzzle piece thinlet through on an angle if possible, um, because that way it doesn't make that big clunky noise when it hits a straight edge. So that's why I'm gonna have him kind of on an angle. And so now I have the luxury, there's a lot of room, so now I can kind of check and see, does this puzzle piece look centered? I'll just kind of take a little look. There's about the same space underneath his chin, above his head, and from <clears throat> side to side. So I can go ahead and run this through. You can also run this through with your regular uh, platform as well. You don't have to use. Um, the big shot you can run this through twice but I think I remember um, even if I didn't run it through twice it should work so then we can just remove this other piece and this is kind of lifting away if for some reason you create the puzzle and it doesn't cut all the way through. This one looks pretty good. You just position this back into place. It's pretty easy to get it right back into place and you can run it through again, okay? So um, this puzzle should be, when it first comes out, it kind of sticks together really well because I think some of the adhesive is still helping to do that, but these pieces should all come out like that. So isn't that cool? So that is the puzzle, but I thought, okay, it's really cool to create a puzzle. You could stick it in a card and it would be cool, but what is even cooler is if you can give it as a gift box. And I think that's what makes this really special is when you can make it into a little gift and you can make it into a little gift that really isn't very expensive. You know, it's just, of course you need to get the thin lits and you need to maybe get the stamp set 
and you need to get some adhesive sheets and you probably need a big shot to to do all this but if you already have a big shot and you can do it in whatever cardstock and whatever so it, it does make for an inexpensive gift and the measurements i think are pretty easy as well for the box so let's start off by making the bottom of the box so you'll need a piece of cardstock that is four inches by four inches and we're just going to take um, our scoring tool and we're going to score it at the inch mark all the way around one inch all the way around okay so that's the bottom now for the lid this one you're going to cut only slightly larger this piece is four and one sixteenth by four and one sixteenth if a one sixteenth inch mark is too boggling for your brain you could also do four and one eighths by four and one eighths your lid is going to be a little looser if you do four and one sixteenth it's going to be like a nice little snug fit four and one eighths by four and one eighths is going to be a little looser i like mine snug um, and that's why you have to score at the one inch mark all the way around you can't do the one inch and the three inch mark you're going to want to do the one inch all the way around because that extra 16th is going to be in the width not on the edges okay so again it's four and one sixteenth square score at all the inch marks all the way around all right so there is my lead piece let me get rid of the scoring part. okay let's do the bottom first so I'm just gonna cut up to make tabs you just cut up to the score line on one side you do both then you turn it um, to the opposite side so the tabs are on the opposite side and then you're going to cut up like that and so then you just need to fold it along all the score lines and grab your tombow I'm going to do Tombow on all four tabs at the same time. It makes it faster. You can do them one at a time too. So just go ahead and bring those sides together. And then just bring these guys in on the side. And there is the bottom of the box now let's do the lid so um, for the lid I'm also going to add some designer series paper so I've got some little strips of designer series paper these are two inch by one inch strips you're gonna need four of them it's easier to do it right now you could also do it afterwards once you have the lid assembled but right now it's nice and flat so it's easy to do so I'm just going to take Tombow and outline each of the rectangles on the side. If I do all the Tombow first, then it will be faster, right? Hopefully. So there's my first piece. I'm just lining it up with the edge. Come through and do my second piece. Sure it's lined up with the edge so it's not overhanging to my third piece and my fourth piece so you can use whatever designer series paper you want this is blueberry bushel cardstock and this is the 26 oh, sorry not 2016 2018 to 2020 in color designer series paper stack it's a great little stack of paper so now i'm going to do the same thing that i did with the bottom of the box i'm going to cut up along the score lines just until i hit the score intersections um, i'm going to do one side first 
Then turn 180, tabs are over here now. So I'm gonna cut two into the other side. This time I'm going to do the thumb grips as soon as the box is assembled um, because I wanna show you something. Uh, it's kind of maybe hard to understand which side to put the thumb grips in now because I don't want them into the extra thick side because it will be really hard to punch through all of that. So, um, and if you bring these tabs in and you've already, I'm gonna fold this real quick. Fold along all the score lines. If you bring these tabs in and you punch it right now, you bring these tabs in, they are going to be in the way and you're gonna to have to punch them one more time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assemble the lid this time first, and then I'm going to punch thumb tabs. So let's bring this in each side. This is just such a cute little, little box and stripes make me happy. Bring this in. Oop. Okay. All right, so now you're going to find the side that doesn't have the tabs on it that isn't super thick. And you're gonna take your little half inch circle punch. And hello to everyone that's joined me tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm just going to move this in just so it's halfway in and I want to center it and then I'm going to punch and that will create your little thumb grip. Do the opposite side halfway in and then just give it a little punch. I'm just going to flatten these one more time, the corners, um, that just helps everything stay into place. And so now this little box has a pretty snug fit, which is what I like. If you use the little, the larger size, um, the four and one eighths inch size, this is going to be a little looser, but this stays together really nicely. So if you're giving it as a gift, you don't even have to tie ribbon or anything around here because it's going to stay in place. That's what I like about it. Okay. So how are we going to decorate the top? So, you know, you're, you probably have different sizes of school photos, right? So this one here, I had a whole bunch of these little guys left over. So I just went ahead and cut this. This is, um, you can kind of see what size you have. This one I cut into a one and three quarter inch square. It's maybe a little bit smaller than that. Um, this piece is um, uh, just a piece of blueberry bushel cardstock. It is about one and seven eighths inch square. And then I took a piece of balmy blue cardstock. This is sticking to my finger. I've got glue on my finger. Sorry, guys. Um, this is balmy blue cardstock. And I used one of the layering squares framelits, the one that's about two inches wide. You can see the little scallops. So I thought that would be a nice little, little touch. So basically what I did there, I just took some snail and I put it on the back of the photo. And I just adhered it centered onto blueberry bushel. And then some more snail onto my little scallop square, scallop square piece. Say that quickly 10 times. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Okay, so that is ready to go on the top of my box. And I think I'm gonna use, I guess you could use snail. You could use Tombow as well. Um, I'll just use Tombow since, not but just use snail since it's out here. And then you can just adhere that to the top. When you're adhering it to the top, make sure the finger tabs are on the side of the box. Okay. So I have to show you how I did the greeting because I really think this is cool. I don't know if I've ever seen someone do this either. So uh, maybe it's a new thing. Maybe someone's done it before, but I just discovered it today. So um, it's cool nonetheless. And maybe some of you haven't seen this before. So maybe it will be new to you too. 
So I have a piece of scrap piece of uh, crumb cake cardstock and I have my classic label punch. I, we have a new stamp set. Oh, and where did it go? Let me grab it real quick. <laughs> and I just realized that I didn't put this stamp set on my um, supply list. So I'm gonna have to go back in afterwards and add this to my supply list. Um, I wanted a little greeting and I thought Miss You would be really cute because Nicholas's grandparents um, live in Canada and we live in the United States. So if I was, you know, sending this, this would be a cute little thing to send um, the grandparents and Miss You would be a really cute greeting. Now there's some other great greetings in the itty bitty greeting stamp sets. Like I think a little hello would be cool. Uh, if you were doing Christmas, you could do Tis the Season. Um, if it was a baby one, you could do Sweet Baby or Happy Day or just For You. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different greetings that you could use out of the Itty Bitty Greeting Stamp Set for the front of the box. But I wanted to use I Miss You. And let me find my blueberry bushel pad, which is what I think I used, yes. So let me open this up and I'm just going to stamp I Miss You kind of in the center of this little strip. Set that aside now and I'm going to use my classic label punch and I think, yeah, I think I just centered it. I'm trying to remember how I did this earlier. So I'm just centering it, making sure it's straight. And punch it up. Now you could stick it on the front just like that, but you could also turn it into a banner with this punch, which I think is cool. Um, so, but to kind of, so you know where to actually bring it in on the side, you have to decide how far you want your banner to stick out. So I'm going to make myself a little mark and that's going to be where I line up the punch with that little mark. So I just come in from the side right here, like this, okay? And see, there's my little pencil mark. I don't know if you can see it. Just make sure it's straight, and then you can punch it, and now you have a little banner. Isn't that cool? I don't know, Do did any of you guys, have you seen that before? I don't know, I hadn't seen it before, and maybe I've been missing the boat on this little punch uh, for a long time but you can turn them into little banners too, if the greeting is small enough. Of course, if the greeting goes all the way, then it would be hard to find enough space to do the banner punch. But I suppose you could also cut a skinny strip of cardstock and do it the same way. But it's nice if you can do it in the classic label punch and then turn it into a little banner. And then I took a little heart. So I, I we don't have many little hearts anymore in, um, we don't have a heart punch anymore. So I found this heart, this was in the bottles framelits, the bubbles and fizz framelits. So I cut myself a little real red heart. I just put a little bit of glue on the top of that. And I'm gonna stick that right next to the I Miss You. You probably have a heart in your collection somewhere that you could use or maybe a little rhinestone or a little button or something just to anchor the greeting. And then I'm just going to come along here and just going to cut that straight. So there is the little banner. And then I'm going to take some mini dimensionals and I'm just going to add a couple to the back. If you guys have not discovered mini dimensionals yet, um, you need to get some. They last, the sheet lasts forever and they are smaller than our regular dimensionals and they're great for smaller things to pop up, smaller things so you don't have to cut up your dimensionals anymore. So um, I just love these. They're new in the catalog this year. So then I'm just going to remove the backing. Okay, someone says they've never seen that before. So good. It's not, not out there, out there yet. So I'm not that I probably someone has done it before, but I so someone may have done it before, but I came up with it myself today. So I didn't copy anyone, but who knows? Someone probably has done it before. It's not like it's rocket science or anything. Um, so um, 
I'm just going to add this right to the front and have the little banner hang up. Isn't that cute? So, so cute. All right, so now I have my puzzle and I can break it up into little pieces and throw it into the little box. And, you know, of course, the little love you to pieces is stamped on the back. You can see a little bit of it still here, right? So that's a cool little secret message on the back, right? You could have your kid write Merry Christmas, you know. I know how much all these th things mean mean to everyone because I know it means a lot to me too. So then you just kind of put it in a little box and it's just like the perfect little tiny gift. And you know, once you've got the framelits um, and the, the stamp set, the framelits and the stamp set, the bundle, if you buy it as a bundle, you can save 10%. So um, that is under $40. So it's a, it's a really affordable bundle. And um, it's really cool because basically then you just need uh, cardstock, um, whisper white cardstock. That's the key if you're going to be photocopying your photos onto there. Um, and then also um, uh, just um, um, you'll need multi-purpose adhesive sheets is what you'll you'll need to glue things together I really recommend that and then it's just like a little tiny box it's like really really cool so let me turn this back around for a second let me get my face back on here so I normally never do Facebook lives in the evening because I'm not a night person I am a morning person, so this was kind of a stretch today, but I just felt like today, the way my day was going, that I wasn't going to get to it this morning. And also what I thought was gonna be really an easy thing um, to create the photo puzzles turned out to be a bit of an experimentation morning as I learned how to do it the best possible way. Um, and then, um, if you uh, don't have a demonstrator and you would like to order anything that you see here today, um, just have a look at my supply list down below, just um, in the description of this uh, Facebook Live, or if you're watching it on YouTube, it will be down in there. I have all the um, supplies. You can just click on them and it will go directly into my store. If you want to um, get the measurements again, I, I know I talked a lot, and um, if you want some of the tips that I um, talked to you about tonight, they are in my blog post, so you'll want to look for my blog link also in the description of this video, and it will take you right there, and I have a, a section um, that tells you the measurement for the box, and I have a section that tells you um, all my tips for doing the mini photo puzzles. So I hope you guys will do some mini photo puzzles because I think they are really, really cool. I think it's a really great gift. Um, if you don't want to do photos, um, look at my uh, video that I did on Wednesday. I used designer series paper and those turned out so beautiful as well. You could, um, you know, um, and they're not so like they are small, easy puzzles. They're 16 piece puzzles, but they're not like super easy either because like I was like you know I had to think about where to put all the pieces so um if you have pretty um designer series paper they make also uh really um a nice puzzle that way and um my video on Wednesday is a four puzzle box. So you can do four 16 piece puzzles in there. Um, so you could do something like that with the photo um, puzzles as well. Like if you have, if you wanted to make it a bigger gift for the grandparents, um, maybe you have, maybe you have more than one child. I have one child, so this would be perfect, you know, one box, or you could do one box per, per child. But say you wanted to do it all in one box, right? You could um, do, you know, you could do, maybe you could do like um, a um, group photo. So you have four kids, four kids or three kids and a dog. You could do a group photo of all of them on the front of the box because it's a little bit bigger. And then you could do individual um uh, puzzle uh, puzzles of each child like their school photos um, in the little individual ones and maybe one of the dog too if you have a dog and you know who knows but I you know this this has a lot of potential and also it makes cute cards so 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm sorry if I blabbed too long for you, but I hope there was some useful information in there and I hope you will enjoy this. And if you've made a puzzle and you want to share it with me, please share it on my Facebook page. I would love to see it. Um, I also have um, a group called Bee Stamping with QB and you can share stuff on there with me. I'd love to see what you guys are up to. Okay, let me just have a look. Um, let me see real quick if there's any questions because I like, I, I haven't gotten it set up yet where I have a computer scrolling by. I tried that the other day and it didn't work. Let me just see real quick. I'm looking through my reading glasses. So my, okay. Okay, I don't see any questions. So I uh, hope you guys have a great evening and I will post this right away. Um, so if you're just joining me right now, um, just um, go back and watch it from the beginning. And uh, just if you have any comments or questions for me, just post them and I will get to them. Um, if I'll probably go to bed in an hour and then I'll get to them tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, I hope you guys all have a great evening and and uh, stay tuned for next week because I'll have a new product of the week next week. Take care. Bye-bye.